Wednesday. Today is Wednesday. And uh wait for my appointment. <laughs> We shipped out the books. Finally, so we're all caught up on orders. So link will be below to purchase books. And we have tons in stock. So we were out of stock for a while, back ordered, and we got a bunch in. So we we're caught up and ready to take orders again. And I believe if Anthony handled it correctly, um, it's international. You could, you don't have to message us and ask. You could just do it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Cool. So yes, books. Order them below now. And uh, today. I have a couple tattoos to make. If they show up, I'm waiting and... Step one in setting an appointment with an artist, consult with the artist, listen, pay attention, read, make an effort. An appointment, you're making an effort. You're gonna set an appointment. And if you're gonna set that appointment, then, then you gotta know how to read a little bit. If they're a walk-in tattooer and you know their hours, walk into their tattoo shop, sit down, talk to them, bug them, um, you know, figure out your tattoo design. I think that that's kind of the best way is to, is an in-person interaction, you know, like there's no back and forth in emails. That's the best way is sitting down, knowing your artist, you know what you're getting yourself into. If that is an option, do that. If they're appointment only and they're busy, you know, then I would say just read. If you follow them on Instagram, read their Instagram, read the posts, you know, they will say, you know, email me at this email, me direct message me, follow this link in my bio, go to this website. But you know, we put a lot of effort, put a lot of effort in, in our work and how we like our appointments booked. And I mean, to keep things organized, you know, I think it's best to, to just make a little bit of effort. The artist is making a lot of effort, just kind of follow the rules that they lay and everything will go smoothly, I promise. For me, I like to have my appointments booked through email. WayneFredrickson at yahoo.com. I also take them through direct message. Um, Direct message, I will, but it kind of sucks because with the story features on Instagram, I'm getting comments every day on all the posts, and then those sit above my appointments. And when I have someone send me a deposit, which I'll explain deposits a little bit later, um, their Instagram name doesn't match their email name for their deposit, but if they send me an email, it's much more easy because their email usually matches their PayPal for the deposit. It's just more organized. Um, all my emails are for appointments, so for me, you know, email is king. So yeah, just listen, pay attention, just do what they ask. You know, if you're gonna make the effort to make an appointment, make the effort to figure out how they like their appointments booked. Number two, so many artists require deposits. What is a deposit? So a deposit goes towards your tattoo most of the time. It'll be explained by your tattoo artist. For me, what a deposit is for me is it secures my time. So today I had an appointment set and my client actually reached out to me and said, hey, I'm just confirming my appointment for 1 p.m. I said, absolutely, see you then. I got here early, I set up my station ready to rock and roll and um, you know, here and I'm just kind of like twiddling my thumbs. So. I had other people that wanted to get tattooed today, but I said I couldn't because I had an appointment. What secured that appointment was that deposit. The deposit for me is a $40 deposit. And so to book an appointment with me, you you email me, you consult with me, just like I was saying before, you figure out what you're gonna get, when you're gonna get it. You know, we figure out the dates and times work for both of us. When we have all that figured out, you go ahead and email me a deposit through PayPal, 40 bucks. That secures your date and time and it goes towards your tattoo. So that lets me know like, okay, you're serious. This is your time. You bought this time. That 40 bucks is your time. You want this design? I'm gonna draw something up for you. You wanna pick off the wall? Cool, I'll have you pick off the wall. But that secures your appointment. That's what sets you apart from the other person wanting to get in. So when you don't show up, you forfeit that deposit. So that $40 goes towards, you know, my time and gas and supplies wasted on your no-show. Um, but it's obviously a lot more cost heavy than that. I mean, if it's a $200 tattoo, a $400 tattoo, it's like, it's like, uh, you know, work just told you, hey, don't show up for the next week, your paycheck's not here. Like, what? Like, what the fuck, you know? So a, a deposit is a sense of security 
for you, knowing that you're gonna have your appointment, especially if you're traveling, you wanna get touched by an artist, you know, you know, don't rely on a walk-in. Some artists don't take walk-ins. Deposit locks that in. For me, it's a sense of security that I know I have these people lined up. Um, so deposits are very important. Some artists, the deposit goes towards the drawing. So if you like cancel or no show or whatever, or or you, you're shopping and you get a cheaper deal and you have that screenshot of that line drawing, well, at least they got paid 40 bucks for their drawing time. Um, sometimes the $40 just locks in the appointment and then the tattoo is a separate price. I know a lot of artists will require bigger deposits and the deposit goes towards the last session. So if you're getting a back piece done, may they require like a $400 deposit. And a back piece is a really big commitment. It's a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of sessions. So you putting down 400 bucks shows your commitment that you're serious to get this thing started and finished. And a way to keep you on the hook and get your tattoo finished, a lot of artists will, will deduct a little bit from it. So maybe it's a $400 deposit, maybe $100 will come off of each session. So you get that deposit back towards each session. Or maybe your last session is free or, or it goes towards the last session. Whatever the case is, deposits lock in your appointments. It's security for you, the client, and me, the tattooer. That's how I do it. That's how some other tattooers do it. Be on the dot. Yes, so when you have an appointment, be on the dot. You know, like, you know, your time, your appointment is at one, be there at one. If not, you know, 12.50, if not 12.45, it's not necessary to be there more than 20 minutes early. Um, but you know, just like you left that deposit, you wanted that tattoo, they wanted to make it, they took their time, you take their time, be there on time. And, um, you know, make sure you get plenty of sleep, make, make sure you get a good, good, you know, meal in your belly that's really important as well don't show up like hungover tired and hungry it's going to be a really rough experience for you and the artist make sure you're showered make sure you're not stinky and make sure you're not a jerk and i think that your experience will be perfect but i think that's the most important one and that runs off of the the one i was saying before you know like if you need to cancel let them know blah 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 but be on time be early take it seriously it should be taken seriously it's a tattoo it's going to be there for a long time if you don't take tattoos seriously, seriously just don't get tattooed. And if you do, you know, get it for a cheap price from the homeboy, get it unprofessionally, get it on a walk-in at whatever shop, that's fine. But, you know what I mean, you're getting what you bargain for, you know, so keep that in mind. So cancellation, if you need to cancel your appointment or reschedule, um, just keep your artists in the loop, you know. I mean, I, I'm, I'm gonna go off of what I would do and I'll kind of explain what other artists would do in this situation. Um, so my, my, my no-show today, right? If, if my uh, client would have reached out to me ahead of time and told me, hey, I'm gonna be a little bit late, I'm in traffic. Um, if I had the time and it didn't run in too much into my next appointment, so my next appointment who left the deposit, you know, their time is secured. I don't want one person being late to, to ruin the next person. That's not fair for them. That's their time. So is, if they're late, but I have the time to give, then I'll be like, okay, cool. Thank you so much for letting me know that you're going to be late. I'll work with you. I'll still be here. You know, um, if they need to cancel completely, like, hey, I just don't want to get tattooed anymore. Um, that's best to know at your earliest convenience. Um, some, some artists will tell you, you know, if you need to cancel... I mean, I mean, I don't know all artists. Like, if you need to cancel, just let us know. You know what I mean? Like, putting off later and later and later only hurts us more and more and more and takes more money out of our pocket, you know, because that's less time and less opportunity we could have had to have booked someone else in your place and more and more chance of us not making any money that day, ultimately. So if you need to cancel, just let your artist know. Let me know. Let them know. Um, if you need to reschedule, you know, a lot of artists, like, with their deposits will require... 24 hours notice or 48 hours notice and if you let them know you know a day or two in advance then their deposit will still be good for your next scheduled appointment um you know if that's the case don't abuse it don't don't like you know keep rescheduling on them because <laughs> you just keep fucking them you know what i mean and um for me i'm pretty understanding you know um i'm it's not so black and white you know if something comes up i'm understanding if it fucks me over it's gonna fuck you over out of your deposit if you're cool about it i'm gonna be cool about it you know you treat me good i'm gonna treat you good generally you know it, it but i mean just just keep us in the loop i know that sometimes it can be easy and if you don't think to say you just don't say anything at all or it's easy just to like run away or hide or just don't message them back or you're afraid of seeming like a jerk so you don't message them back but in all reality that kind of makes you the jerk so you know if your artist 
takes your appointment seriously, which they should, and that's why you left a deposit, and you should have taken that seriously, they're they're waiting. They're waiting, and they're, they're wondering where you're at, and they're wondering if you're okay, probably. And, um, you know, we put a lot into what we do, and especially if it's a big custom tattoo, we put hours into drawing that thing for you. So so just take take a minute to, to consider that and, and keep us in the loop. And I think um, I think most artists would be very understanding if, if you're... Uh, if you're kind of just not, I mean, just do the right thing. You get it. Have an idea of what you want. A clear one. Yes. So meaning, you know, you set your appointment, you want to get tattooed. You know what you want to get tattooed. If you want to freestyle and you want to come in, you want to pick stuff off the wall and all that, that's totally fine. Um, if you want to get something drawn on, if you want to, you know, whatever. If you're down like that, be down like that. If you, you know, know exactly what you want, it's oddly specific, be oddly specific when you meet your artist or when you leave that email, that direct message, whatever the case may be. Reference pictures help, you know what I mean, a ton. You know, the more we know about what you want, who you are, how you walk, how you talk, the better we can serve you. The less we know and the more vague you are, the more vague we're gonna be. And I think a very important one is, you know, people be like, I want a rose, how much? I don't fucking know, like what kind of rose do you want? Where do you want it? How big do you want it? What color do you want it? Where do you wanna put it on your body? You know, what kind of style do you want it? You know, tattooing is so specific and every little additional line takes a little additional amount of time. So the more we know, the more you know, um, you know, over explain yourself and uh, ultimately it'll just help us way, way more. Don't ask us to plagiarize other artists' work. Yes, so like I said before, reference pictures help. So, but they are not your tattoo that you're going to get, you know? So if you really like someone else's work, go to someone else. If they're too far, figure it out. It's really not our problem. Um, you know, if you do want to plagiarize something, you know, things that are up for grabs are cartoons and existing things that aren't tattoo artists related. Once a tattoo artist put their hand to it and it's now theirs, you know, respect that. That is theirs, you know what I mean? Like, don't ask us to, to it just, it's just not fair for anyone, you know? If you like our work, come to us. If, you know, it's just not our problem if they're too far for you. And if you don't, if they're too far and you don't value it enough, then just, I don't know, maybe it's not for you. References, I mean, they are references. They're just that. They're for referencing, they're for inspiration. So, you know, in your email or when you go in to talk about your tattoo appointment, you want to have a ton of photos if possible. And you know, say you want to get a dragon, you're like, okay, I like this dragon head, I, I, I hate the color of it. I like the color of this dragon head, but I hate the head. I like this one's head, I like this one's foot, I like this one's wing, and I like these flames, and I hate those clouds, but I like these clouds. The more we know, the more we can help you. Kind of stated that before. But um, yeah, you know what I mean? I think just like, when you're seeking out your artist, just look at their work, make sure you like it. And if you consistently like their work and what they're doing, then when you have your idea to bring to them, you'll probably consistently like what they make for you. Um, I think that helps. So don't is don't expect us to plagiarize other artists work, you know, because in the end, we bear the brunt of it. And I think there's a lot of tattoo artists who are in walk-in shops and they just don't care. They, they you know, they're, they're tattooing all day and people are coming in and they're tired of telling people no. And they're like, I want this. And it's like, Fuck it, I'll do this, you know. Me personally, not that guy. I don't speak for all artists, but a big don't for me is don't expect me to copy some other tattooers' work. Unless they're dead, long gone, and they're a legend, and I respect them, and I want to keep that tradition alive, some artist's work is up for grabs, but if you found it on Instagram, it's probably not up for grabs. I mentioned this before, but don't be a no-call, no-show. That just fucking sucks. I know... I think I explained this earlier. I don't think I need to explain this again, right? Um, hmm. Just know that, like, you flaking on your appointment weighs on us heavier than it weighs on you because it's our time that was wasted. You know, obviously you had something better to be doing, so. So just do the right thing. Just keep us in the loop. I mean, if you appreciate us, we'll appreciate you, and you should do that by letting us know what's going on and keeping us in the loop. Don't ignore aftercare instructions. Louder. Don't ignore <laughs> aftercare instructions. Look at that man, isn't he beautiful? Okay, yeah, so if you trust your artist to tattoo you, trust their fucking aftercare instructions. If you don't trust their aftercare instructions, you probably don't trust their ability to tattoo you, and if you don't trust their ability to tattoo you, then you probably shouldn't be getting tattooed by them. So, 
everyone's aftercare instructions vary differently because their styles differ and so their aftercare differs. So more minimal styles of tattoos require more minimal types of aftercare and more you know, heavy, gnarly styles of tattoos require a little bit more of a caring aftercare. So, I mean, I, I kind of touched base on this other one and just to, just to kind of avoid this question in the comments below, you're gonna get, well, what's your aftercare, bro? Well, don't worry about it. If you wanna get tattooed by me, I'll explain my aftercare to you. But I think that me explaining my aftercare to the world doesn't really benefit anyone because you're not getting tattooed by me and you're not tattooing like me. And if you're tattooing like me, then you're probably taking care of tattoos like me. And if you want to figure it out, get tattooed by me. But the best aftercare you can ever follow is the one that your artist recommends. And I think that's going to do it for today's video. Wait, maybe it's not. Bonus tips. I'm going to throw the camera and then I'm going to catch it because I need to look at my notes so I can read what the bonus tips I wrote down was. Bonus tips, don't forget to tip. You know, I think that if you can tip your barista or your bartender, you know, who mixes your drink in a minute, then it's appropriate to tip your tattooer to spend an hour plus tattooing you. If you're not a tipper, that's fine, you know, let that weigh heavy on your conscience. But good tipping is good karma. And a little bit extra goes a long way, and if your artist puts a little bit extra out of their time and out of their day to give you a little bit better of a tattoo, maybe give them a little buck or two. Just saying, when it hurt. It's never expected, but it's always appreciated. I have clients who don't tip, that's fine. I don't expect it. If you've ever seen me accept money, I don't even look at it. That is, that is an opportunity to rip me off. But I will count it later, and I'll probably catch you, and you probably won't get tattooed by me again. But if the feeling's right, and I trust you, I'm probably gonna stick that money in my pocket and not even look at it. And later on, I'm gonna count that money when I see a little bit of a tip, my heart is gonna go blump, 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 blump. And fucking, in a, good way. <laughs> in a good way, not in I need to go to the hospital way. And you know, I save my tips and they go a long way. And I just want to say for those of you that get tattooed by me, for those of you that do tip, like I see it out there, I'm counting, I'm looking, I'm paying attention and it does make a difference and it really does mean the world to me. Without further ado, I think that today's video is going to be over because today I got cut short because I had a cancellation that didn't cancel because it was a no-show, no-call. <laughs> so I had someone not show up and that's what inspired me to make this video and I think that this video could help you if you want to get tattooed and you don't know the appropriate etiquette. And um, I think that I did something good for the world today. And if you dig it, leave a comment below and let me know. Thank you. I wasn't aware of why de deposits mattered. Or, you know, fuck you, bro. I hate your tats. I don't know why I watch this fucking video. But let me know below. And, um, and uh, if you want to set an appointment, link is below in the description. My mailing list, my Instagram, all that. Just read a little bit. That was kind of the first thing we went over in the beginning of this. If you don't remember, if you, if you care, then, then put a little care and read a little bit. It'll go a long way. Anyways, done rambling. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for listening. Thanks for paying attention. I truly appreciate it. See you guys in the next one.